มโอเคโซ่ apologies for those that were um, watching from the beginning and and seeing me talk with no sound, <laughs> but here I am again, and um, so I can uh, I'll start again. All right. So welcome, welcome to uh, Yoga Solutions Live. Uh, th this um, particular one I made in an event because I, I got a good question from a, a student that I'm working with, um, Mandy, um, ab about. Uh, She, she was wanting some advice about her helping someone that was pregnant and feeling problems in their lower back, in their hips, um, that sort of thing. And she asked if, uh, what would I advise? And, <clears throat> and I gave her a, 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 an answer, but it was kind of vague because it required some clarification. Yes, so uh, first things first. Um, Yeah, uh, just to be clear, I, I, I don't do any pregnancy yoga courses. I don't um, run pregnancy yoga classes, but um, the way I approach my yoga makes it appropriate for those that are pregnant. Uh, there, there's this sort of delineation of what kinds of yoga are for and um, My idea is that um, all yoga should support you through all stages of life. And pregnancy is a, is a particular situation that ha comes with its own particular challenges um, that requires particular kind of uh, points of focus, I suppose, awarenesses, that sort of thing. But generally speaking, it, it's, the, the job is the same. It's to listen to what the body is saying and interpret it well so that you can um, give the body what it needs in order to be able to function quite naturally. It, it, it's not a natural situation to be in pain when you are pregnant. I know it's a broad statement to, to make, But uh, in general day-to-day -day aches and pains, we, we all suffer them throughout our, our lives. We, we, we all suffer those things. And um, pregnancy is not a reason any more than life is. It's just uh, the way we do things. And um, <clears throat> if your um, approach to yoga, if your intention behind your yoga is, is to kind of discover the nature of things, the, the affirmative, life-affirming nature of things in the way you engage with the world, then you have found yoga that is appropriate for pregnancy, for uh, menopause, for old age, for youth, for whatever, you know? You found a yoga that you need. So, um, th and that's my approach. That being said, uh, my wife, Abigail, is, um, is very is a doula. she's a, a doula and she's um uh she's um, a pregnancy yoga kind of expert she used to run regular classes there and um when she the reason she worked with me the one one of the reasons she worked with me is because everything i was teaching kind of made better sense than some of the stuff that she had learnt as solutions uh, for pregnancy yoga but wasn't uh, that wasn't providing the evidence that it worked you know um, it made more sense to her and, and she's an intelligent woman you know? um, she knows the physiology of the whole thing and and, uh, and um, was quite firmly opinionated about um, some of the pregnancy yoga that's out there already And then she came across my stuff, and um, yes, I, I see it as a sort of uh, validation of, of my yoga as a general approach, okay? So, uh, first things first, just to, just to sort of get you into the 
uh, mindset. Um, and, and by the way, this is not just for uh, this workshop is not just for pregnancy. Uh, it's entitled pregnancy and the hips, lower back, that sort of thing. But um, if you want to sort those areas out, you don't need to be pregnant to do so. <laughs> okay, and uh, and pregnancy just highlights the need to do so. Um, okay, so. Um, Yes, yes. What do we, what do we, what do we need to start with? Well, first, first of all, when when you're pregnant, I, I like working with um, um, women that are pregnant because they have a, a kind of an innate, deep sensitivity. It's it's there. There are changes in your hormones and your brain chemistry, all sorts of things. Your your um, physical chemistry that points you towards being sensitive, being kind to the body. And, uh, you know, Abigail used to tell me uh, one of the hardest things about running pregnancy yoga classes was getting anyone to do anything. And, um, and it's because people are busy listening to their own body and not able, really, to push themselves into doing anything that doesn't feel right, um, because that's natural. You know, there's an innate um, kind of protection that kicks in that, that doesn't allow the mind to override the body's needs and which is what most of us are in the business of doing on a daily day-to-day -day basis and it's what leads to most of the problems we're trying to fix with our yoga you see so um yes there's an innate sensitivity that develops when you're pregnant and and it becomes actually a, a really good time to learn about actual yoga um because you're looking for solutions and you're, you're looking for solutions in a, for a very good reason. And, um, and, and the sort of nonsense aspect of things just falls away. You know, the, 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 the ambitions, the, the grasping, the wanting to be this, the wanting to be that. You're just looking after yourself and wanting things to feel good. And so, so it's a really good sort of time actually to start to tune into um, this kind of yoga, being kind to yourself. So a few things to um, cover before we start. Number one, the hormonal changes you're going through if you're pregnant means that your body is already making your um, connective tissue, your tendons, your your support structure more elastic so you're already getting more flexible so one thing really you shouldn't be focusing on is stretching stretching is not something you need to do you don't need to become more flexible in order to give birth what you need to be able to do is relax and let go. You need to be able to let go and you need to be able to work from within. Let go on the outside, work from within, which is kind of how um, most of my instructions come across anyway when I'm teaching my yoga. If you go for stretching with some idea that you need to be become more flexible in order to give birth, if you go with the idea of stretching, you, you'll distort your structure. And if you, especially around the pelvis and lower back and sacroiliac joints, the pubic symphysis, if you go into stretchy stuff, when your um, tendons are more prone to elasticity, um, you will cause, you're likely to cause distortions that will plague you after you've had the baby. Uh, I, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to scare you. Well, maybe I am a little bit, because I, I, um, it, it terrifies me when I see uh, pregnancy yoga that involves a lot of making big shapes and stretching. Um, doing those things is fine if you do them well, but the point isn't to stretch. And uh, one, one very common thing that happens is, I, I can't remember what the name of the, of the um, dysfunction is, it's, but when there's a, a, a twist in the, 
in the pubic symph symphysis joint, the joint between the uh, two halves of the pelvis at the front of the pubis. Um, if you do a lot of stretchy, kind of one-sided reaching out kind of postures, it's very easy to distort that joint. It becomes very easy. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty tough joint usually. It's, it's a powerfully collagenous material, but along with everything else, that joint needs to become more flexible for you to be able to give birth. It happens naturally. It happens through the, uh, the change in hormones in the body. It happens naturally, so you don't need to stretch it. Okay, so first things first, do try not to stretch yourself out of shape uh, and around the sacroiliac joint as well. So the pelvis and the base of the spine, obviously it's the, it's the part that needs to move the most during the birth process. And it's quite a powerful movement that um, <laughs> us men would not survive <laughs> should we experience it, okay? Um, so, you know, if you, if you ex whilst your body is developing that elasticity, if you exaggerate movement, through through your yoga you're doing you're probably doing more damage than good okay so that's first first thing i need, need to get across secondly the the sensitivity that you've that you're developing quite naturally um gives you a kind of authority in your internal experience so when I, when I give you some things uh, to explore, those of you that are pregnant and are trying this out will experience it probably a lot more clearly than those of you that are not, that are here to um, you know, help other people or just to look after your own hips and lower back, okay? So um, tr trust, trust the sensations and, but it's, it's kind of, um, there needs to be a, 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 a trust in the nature of the thing. So, you know, one of the, one of the big things that um, causes um, complications in people's, or difficulties in, in, in giving birth is, is a fear response to sensation. A fear response to sensation and, a f and fearful ideas about the body. So there's, there's um, a lot of stuff around um, strengthening the pelvic floor, for example. Um, yeah, you need a responsive pelvic floor, um, but the idea of strengthening it kind of goes with a sense of tension and holding, which, when you get to the birthing process, become in, in, in invokes a problem. You know, it, it creates a resistance to letting go. Um, so it, your mindset really important the the body the body has an intelligence to it if you're prepared to um listen to its function listen to what it's saying and engage with it wholeheartedly but be careful of how you're thinking about it, it you know the the idea of um strengthening your pelvic floor is is kind of it's kind of an idea of kind of holding it all together from underneath to stop everything from falling out, <laughs> you know, it's 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 an, uh, it's a fear-based response, and the intention in the pelvic floor is a fear response. Uh, that being said, it needs to be responsive. It needs to be able to um, uh, move. It needs to be able to let go, to allow the breath in, and to allow the baby out. And it needs to be able to engage to wake up in a support response. And uh, I'll be taking you through some of those things so, so that, um, so that um, you get a direct experience of it. Um, and one of the best ways of dealing with the mind and your relationship to sensation, your relationship to your body, is to apply imagination. So, you know, because when, when you have an idea that you have to hold tension in the pelvic floor, for example, or make your pelvic floor strong, Right? If, when you have that idea, your imagination is creating a sort of nervous system setup that makes that activity tension rather than responsiveness. So I'll, I'll give you an example. So um, 
if you're if you're just sitting, all right. Um, tr try this. Tighten the pelvic floor, and it'll it'll do something. It'll um, pull you into the ground through your bones, um, but it will also feel like tension. <laughs> it'll and it will interfere with the breath and make you feel shallow in the breath. Make you feel um, tense. It'll it, it'll develop a kind of stress response. So relax, relax. So now, now what I'd like you to do is to just get your hands and cup them. And if you um, imagine that you're cradling underneath baby, and those of us that are not pregnant, you can, you can use the crease underneath the little uh, roll <laughs> that the majority of us have. Um, relax your belly and cup your hands and, and cup underneath baby. Okay, and then what you're doing is you're cradling. So you add the attitude of cradling baby to your intention. So there's a gentleness, there's a sensitivity. Now, as you do that, the, the cradling of the weight and the work from your wings, your shoulders to support it, as well as your hands, should give you the ability to relax your lower back. It doesn't matter what shape you make. It make, makes me sort of drop my head a bit. But uh, your, your, your task, your task is to look after baby, to cradle baby from underneath. Okay. And whilst you're doing that, if your back is relaxed, you might notice that with this supportive effort, the breath is something that kind of arrives a bit more behind you. And it arrives because you relax into the ground behind you. Okay, so there's not a restriction of breath when you support baby. Another thing that happens is when you release the breath and let your weight drop down through your pelvis behind you, something underneath baby, something behind your hands and below it in your pelvic floor will kind of gather inwards and it's a function of the breath and of the released spine. So just noticing that the breath is arriving behind you because you're cradling baby. Don't, don't go off task. If you, if you stop cradling baby, you'll go into what it feels like and you'll confuse yourself. Right? It's, a, it's, a, it's a task, you know, you're, you're cradling baby, that's your job, but you can be aware of your comfort as you do so. So with this relaxation, I don't want you to hold yourself upright. You relax as you use your wings and your arms and your hands to cradle baby. Notice that the breath is something that falls from above. It's not something you lift for. And it arrives from the ground into your lower back and pelvic floor. When you let go of the breath, there's a similar downward release. But what happens is underneath baby, where your hands are, kind of gathers in a little bit. And it involves a, a tiny engagement of the, of the pelvic floor. The tiniest kind of kiss, if you like. If you can get into the noticing, whilst you cradle baby, if you can get into noticing this movement, this rhythmic movement of the breath beneath baby, you could notice that there is kind of some musculature around where your cupped hands are that sort of anchors into the ground a bit through your set bones as you release the breath. And it ends up as a kind of gesture, a gesture un, of cradling the baby as if you've got a pair of hands in there. But it's happening from within. It's happening from the relaxation of the spine behind you. 
and a, a rhythmic pulsing, a rhythmic inward and upward support that happens inside the pelvis, underneath and behind baby, almost, that goes with the release of the breath, and that is sort of remains there without tension as the breath arrives directly across the pelvic floor. Another way of describing it is it's like a smile that happens between the pelvic bones. Now, I could say do Muller Banda and hold your pelvic floor tight to, to keep that on, but it's much better if it's just a, a gentle smile. You know? If you, if, you, if you breathe with a smile, the smile becomes the breath. If you release the breath into a smile, baby gets a little bit of cradling from underneath. So the weight you feel on your back is relieved. Good. Now, hopefully you experience something. And I'm going to give you something, um, yeah, so, so that, that, that's an example, that's an example. There's, um, there's things you can do, in, instead of being tense in the pelvic floor, if you get interested in the nature of the breath and its release in, in a supportive fashion, this is uh, one of the fundamental uh, principles behind my yoga, is, is the breath itself is meant to be the thing that relates to earth and space. So that um, we end up free in the spine, free, free to move. And we're not busy carrying our weight. And whether you've got baby in there or um, a bit too many dinners, <laughs> in my case, um, that weight doesn't have to weigh you down. It doesn't have to weigh you down because we have this um, pulsing fluid mechanism. It works a bit like a jellyfish. There's an upward release of the fluid as you um, give down away from you through your base, you see. And it's difficult to find, and uh, it's, it's um, but if you're pregnant, you you kind of have, um, you have a magic key, you know, you, you, you're gonna, f it's gonna be easier for you to, f for, easier for you to find, uh, because your system is a little, lot more sensitive. Um, but, you know, if you work with me regularly, you develop that skill anyway. It's, um, it's a natural part of being a human. So, um, there's one, one thing that I'd like you to notice. And then we're going to make it nicer. Now, don't lie on your back if you're more than, um, what is it, uh, 20 weeks? I don't know. Um, I'll do it on, my, uh, on the left-hand side, because that, that, that's the... That's the um, best kind of arrangement if uh, w w once you're moving towards the third trimester I, I believe it's about half uh, yeah 20 weeks in and um, this sidedness uh, won't really matter and you, you'll see that you'll see that in a, in a moment when I when I give you the practice because you get to work uh, in a balanced way even though you're on your side. The, the reason um, it's the left-hand side, uh, Abigail um, clarified it for me yesterday. I, I sort of knew it, but I didn't know why. And she, and she said it's because in a, in a healthy pregnancy, you've got baby uh, lying with spine to the left and head at the base ready for birth. That's the kind of optimal um, position. So you, you kind of want to encourage that and, um, and I think quite naturally, if you lie on your right hand side, you'll start to feel wrong. So, um, you need to be comfortable. Um, so if, if it's awkward for your head and arm or whatever, uh, you, can have a push, you can have a cushion there. Um, one thing to play with is rather than sagging so that you are, so that you're banana shaped, if you bring the hip and shoulder closer together underneath you, it might feel a bit awkward to start with, but that will make you more supportive through your bones and the spine will be um, less distorted, okay? L less in a side bend. So bringing yourself together 
underneath gives you the opportunity to lean in into your shoulder and its attempt to slide away from you actually gives you support. Same with the hip. If the hip's closer into you, when you relax your weight into that contact, it trying to slide away from you causes support that travels through your spine. And you just relax to start with. So if you noticed that feeling of a kind of cradling of baby from underneath, from inside the lower belly, you can bring that feeling round to underneath on the left hand side. How do you do that? Well, you do that with belly muscles, but um, what I'd like you to do is now, now you've sort of put your structure together on the left hand side, I'd like, I'd like you to sort of nudge into the ground with your left pelvis and which will involve the left leg nudging away from you slightly. And that action, uh, if, I, if I exaggerated it, it would be that, okay? It's sort of pushing the leg away. Don't want you to do it that much. I just want you to do it enough so that what you're doing essentially is supporting yourself, okay? So do it just enough to feel if that causes a kind of cradling underneath baby on the left-hand side, that feeling. Um, for those of you without baby, it will just be a, a kind of gathering in feeling, a hollowing back into fur further into the abdominal cavity feeling, or underneath. And this underneath baby thing gives you the um, gives you the sense of not contracting the belly muscles, not tightening around baby. It's more of a an inner response that supports the sling from underneath directly. And that leg on the ground, engaging with support, will help you find that. There's also a sense of nudging into the ground through the shoulder. Through the shoulder, through the ribs. And that, that will make your chest work, your ribs work a little. Okay? If you nudge into the ground through the shoulder and pelvis, your ribs start to move away from the ground a little. But I don't want you to make it an exercise. It's just being with your contact in an active way. Okay. Now, so it's a little bit effortful, this engagement with support, but that support should be giving you that feeling of lightness underneath baby, as in there's a cradling sensation which means that your back won't be carrying the weight. If you sort of relax, if you collapse into this, and especially if you relax into a, a banana shape, then your back will hang and baby will hang from back, from the back. So, so that will just sort of, uh, it's not wrong, it's just it'll, um, it's not the practice. So bringing yourself together and then using that, the, the contact of the hip and the shoulder to, to, for support by leaning into them and then nudging away from you slightly. As if you're trying to slide your elbow very slightly further away from you. You'd, uh, as if you're, and I uh, don't want you to get tense in the arm or anything. And as if you're trying to slide the lower leg slightly away from you. Basically, it's you nudging into, leaning into your support. And the outcome will be a sense of cradling underneath baby. Now to give you a reason for bothering to do this, the top leg can slide away from you. And I want it to remain relatively heavy as you use the ground underneath you to motivate this action. You kind of want the leg to elongate away from you. No tension in the knee but you can point the toes away from you so that it travels. And that, that, that will start to feel like a bit of a stretch. I don't want you lifting the leg high up. That's, that's not what we're doing. We're trying to find a sense of supporting this floating leg from the ground. So it should feel your body. You should feel that your body is actually quite light. 
So a bit of work with that foot underneath you, that leg underneath you. And there's a bit of a response from the rib cage and underneath baby in here. Okay. And what's more, the, the leg that's coming up, you might, as you reach away from yourself, you might feel some muscles around the outside of the thigh. This is a good thing. This is a good thing. I don't want you to feel any holding on the inside of the thigh. Okay. So the foot points away from you. You're using the ground to support yourself. Foot floats away from you. And there's a sense of pressing into the ground slightly with this leg. The leg underneath you. So you find the muscles on the outside of that hip as well. So in the end, the legs are trying to kind of separate from each other, but you're not, you're not trying to achieve that by lifting. The legs are trying to, the, this top leg is kind of floating in space, and there's a sense of coming together around the outside of the hips. There's a sense of lightness underneath baby. And all of this needs to go with breathing. So you can sort of relax to breathe. And as you release the breath, you can engage. You relax to breathe. And as you release the breath, you engage. So you get to practice these actions as a breathing function, as a function that goes with the release of the breath. You relax to breathe. And as you release the breath, you engage with ground and this growing floating leg. And what you'll be developing is a way of using the ground for support that cradles baby from within. And this growing leg will be growing without you pinching your spine. Relax to breathe. Engaging to open out with the release of the breath, without pulling on your spine. If you want to make it stronger for yourself, you engage whilst you breathe. So you breathe what you do. It can be harder work for the hips and other things, but it won't be hard work for your back. And when you release the breath, you sort of try and relax into this lightness. You give the weight down through the hip and the shoulder. This leg floats. Baby continues to feel cradled from underneath. So if you want to explore it further, you breathe what you're doing. And then release the breath into a new relationship to the ground underneath you and the space above you. You'll still feel the muscles around here working. Yeah. work to breathe into support and then when you relax hopefully that leads to a sense of dropping your weight through your base floating in space and your baby being light okay have a rest if that worked these muscles around the outside of the hip that's a really good thing and whilst you're relaxing i explain why one of the um things that happens with the pelvis, like I said, is it becomes hypermobile, and it needs to in order to allow birth. But you don't want that hypermobility to um, become weight bearing. So that's why you get sacroiliac problems, you get lower back problems, um, sometimes uh, the problem of pubic symphysis. Okay. What you do want is the way you engage, what you do want is you want the limbs to actually help um, kind of put the bones together so that what you're developing is support and that floating leg thing as long as you don't try and lift it you know um, that floating leg thing causes the proprioceptive muscles around the outside of the hip to kind of anchor the thigh bone into the pelvis in a way that means the weight of the leg actually kind of puts the pelvis together it puts the it sits the, the pelvis together at the pubis and it causes the pelvis around the sacrum to kind of cradle the joint in a, in a 
supportive kind of way. Uh, the normal stretchy stuff would pull on the pubic symphysis and, and kind of pull the pelvic bones, well, a push on the spine as the pelvic bones pull round it. So, but this, this thing, you're kind of using that weight to drop the weight through the pelvis itself and it should feel very supportive. You know, the, pel the pelvis kind of disappears. The awareness of the breath, that emptying from within because you're using the ground, that cradling of baby means that when you release the breath, you don't collapse against your spine. So your spine doesn't pinch, right? And all, all of these things, the, the engagement with the earth, the engagement through breath and release starts to bring your natural movement in line with natural movements of breathing. And that's the final solution where your actions in terms of supporting yourself from the ground and your actions in space in terms of kind of trying to find um, a relationship to space that isn't about squashing baby, you know, to, live, to be in space. Um, helps you find a more natural inner supportive thing below baby as a craving kind of response and if I say core core that would make you tense it's not the stuff around the surface it's so it's the inner responses of the release of the breath and those inner responses are just support responses so if you are engaged with support as you breathe they don't interfere with breathing the, the tension does. If you hold your pelvic floor tight, if you hold your belly muscles tight, that interferes with breathing. But it, you get a responsiveness to using the ground, so try it again, the floating leg and using the thigh on the ground. You get a responsiveness to that from, um, from breathing and its release that leaves you supported on the inside so that you don't have to hold yourself with your spine on the outside. These muscles on the outside of the hip are helping you find support from that doesn't pull your pelvis apart, that, that doesn't squash your spine at the back. And using the, the leg underneath you gets the same muscles to work on the other side. So you're actually supporting your pelvis together from both sides. Using the shoulder gets your ribs to work as well, just a little, not, not to lift off the ground, but just, to, just enough to get the breathing responses of the ribs to join in with the support. And gravity is causing the ribs on top to do that job anyway. So this very good um, exercise, if you like. And if you want to augment this, you could try other movements where you use the leg underneath to start to roll towards your back and you do that by bringing the foot that's in space towards you. So you can um, relax, it's quite hard work, quite hard work. But if you find the rhythmic exhale using the ground and that floating leg to start the thing, then from there, you can find the inhale in this position using the ground and that extending leg to support you. And then the exhale can be you bringing the lifted foot towards you as the leg underneath slides away from you. And don't go all the way onto your back, but you can use this to kind of massage. The upper part of you and you're still working the same muscles around the pelvis so you're still inviting the same lightness in, that supports baby from within spine behind should be left alone free to breathe and the movement from this sort of uh, more flexed position to more extended also teaches you something about how to open up the upper body. So 
So I would breathe. If you're if you're practicing the uh, rolling onto your back, you breathe in whilst you're extending, and release the breath that feeling as you roll towards your back a little. Uh, no one needs to get too confused about the breath. Basically the breath is supposed to help. I, ju I just noticed when I moved back to extension I took a breath here and then use the releasing breath to come back. Okay so it's just getting the thing to harmonize with the breath. It's not a prescribed inhale exhale thing. Uh, the movements of breathing are meant to join in with your movement and support. One little hint for the upper spine is this arm, this shoulder underneath you. A thing that helps you feel supported from that is to draw it towards you. Draw it towards you. Okay. So see where, where in your movement that is useful. You could try using it bring yourself back and that will help with the upper spine if your head can relax okay that's probably enough on that um, I didn't get up very well you you should get up better than that <laughs> the way you get up is by giving your weight to your hand and that extending leg will help you come up okay so so this has gone on a little while, it's longer than usual, um, but uh, I think it's um, an important subject. I want to, I want to do some more, uh, I think it's because there's more things, I, w I want more function to be involved. So that, that's your kind of exercise, if you like, that will wake stuff up for you around the hips in a way that will be useful. There we go. So. Um, Yes, uh, I asked Abigail last night whether it would be useful to um, do some stuff around um, standing and bending down to pick stuff up. And she said, yes, absolutely. So I, um, I want to help with that. And hopefully that should, the, the thing you've just done should help you feel that when you extend those feet away from you, you get a feeling of support around the outside of the hips. It's a sort of widening feeling, as if you were still lying on the ground and pulling wide, you know? It's a widening feeling, that, but, but this time the feet are on the ground. And that should give you a sense of support that comes through the hip. And if you can recreate that gentle smile that happens underneath baby, and use your arms to find it so your back can relax. Another thing to do is to trust the fronts of your feet rather than putting all the weight on your heels. So if you can drift the weight forwards enough for the heels to become a little bit light and then cradle the weight of the baby with your wings, with your arm, hands and wings from underneath up to take the weight off of your back. Now you don't have to have your heels right off the ground, just, just light, just light by having your weight more forwards. Now this will be hard for your um, legs if your feet are not responsive. So you need to be able to scrunch up your toes and open out your toes to be supported by your feet. Now with all this difficulty, I want you to practice being kind to baby using your wings, that will help your upper spine. Now, if your shoulders are carrying baby, not your back, then you can breathe into your back. And as you let the breath go, the sense of the heels dropping down away from you can give you that same feeling of cradling baby from underneath. Muscles around the belly are still kind of relaxed, but underneath baby, there's a little scooping feeling that supports baby's weight. You can do that by being on the fronts of the feet. The fronts of the feet do that. The wings help you 
organize your upper spine better when you do it with your hands. But the fronts of the feet supporting you will give you that possibility. The heels going down from that not only gets you a sense, allows the heels to fall away from your back, so your back remains open and safe, but will give you that scooped out feeling underneath baby, whilst baby is allowed to relax into the hammock. Let's do that both sides. So the, the cradling means you can let go of muscles at the back. You can let go of your lower back muscles, you can let go of the tightness around the tops of the buttocks. So you get a, a, a sense of support. Being heavy on the heels makes those things work. So being on the fronts of the feet means you, a bit lighter on the heels, means you can relax behind you. The cradling, if you do it with your wings, that will help your upper spine open up a bit. Allows your throat to come forwards, your heart to come forwards, okay, using your wings. And you're cradling the weight of baby with your hands. Now when the breath gets involved with that, you get a feeling of breathing into your back from the feet up, from underneath the feet, up behind you. When you release the breath, you can release the breath from underneath the baby as you give it to your heels. Okay, so you're, you're not carrying your weight as you bend over, you see. And the more skilled you get at this, that cradling, it, you know, you, I could say tighten your pelvic floor, but that would give stress to the baby as well as you. But if you can find a breathing response that's to do with being on your feet, and your wings can help you find that, when you release the heels away from you, that also allows you to touch the ground. The breath emptying underneath baby as you arrive on your heels means you can reach the ground. Coming up, you don't need to haul your weight up. That will cause problems for your spine and for, give stress to the baby. Coming up, is as simple as transferring the weight to the fronts of the feet again. And then when you get there, when you get down, when you get up, either way, you can once again drop the heels away from you from underneath the baby. And that should give you a sense of support from underneath because your feet go down and as they go down if there's that slight widening feeling that you did when you're lying on your back you'll be able to uh, relax any kind of effort in the pelvic floor because the widening itself actually puts the bones together to support your pelvis in place, which is what the pelvic floor is trying to do, what, the core, what the, these muscles are trying to do. And if that goes with breathing, what you feel is you land on your feet to breathe and baby is supported. You land on your feet to release the breath, as in the feet extend away from you slightly, and baby is supported, leaving you free to be in space above baby. And uh, that's another half to it that's more to do with the upper spine and neck and shoulders, which I'll, I'll do on another day, maybe. If you go for a little walk, just see how those legs respond. If you've got a sense of the feet at one end, hips at the other, and instead of you leaning back to carry baby, there's something inside of you, underneath baby, that is supporting it, you can get a feeling of your, your legs dangling away from you from behind baby. So you walk from the upper spine a bit more. 
Okay, that's plenty. I've, I've been going, going on for an hour now. Um, usually my yoga sessions are only half an hour. Um, but it's a big subject and I wanted to cover a lot of things really. I hope that is of use for you. If you have got a, an issue, if you've already got the, um, I can't remember what it's called, uh, pubosis or something, it's, it's where the pubic synthesis twists, if you've got sacroiliac problems, if, you're, um, if you've got any kind of sciatica or anything through a, a threatening prolapse disc, I don't know, um, work with me, uh, get in touch. I, I can, I've, I've helped many people with these issues um, before. Uh, and online, it works. I, I can see exactly what's going on for you on the, on, on the screen. I've got this big screen. I can see all the detail. I can see it for groups of people as well. But um, uh, yeah, uh, book a free 15 minutes and I, I'll, I'll give you what I can in 15 minutes. And if you need further help, then you can book a one-to-one -one or something. Okay. Um, otherwise, that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I'll leave it on Facebook for a little while. Uh, so feel free to share it around appropriately to people that might benefit from this or enjoy it. And um, I, I'm, uh, if you want to work with me, you can, uh, you can come to one of my Saturday morning retreats. I, I do every Saturday morning. I do a two hour, was it two hours or two and a half? Yeah, two and a half hour workshop um, based on the needs of whoever turns up. And uh, yeah, there's always a little break in the middle so that we can... That's not too gru <laughs> not too grueling, and it's not hard work. It's a, it, it set I set up a theme based on what people need, and um, it it always involves being kind to the body, and it always involves deep relationships between the breath, your earth, and your surroundings in what you're trying to do. Um, so yeah, turn up for one of those. Uh, you can book a place on the website, um, and. You can get a view only place if you don't want me to watch you practice and that's cheaper. Uh, or you can become a premium member. And uh, also if you become a silver member on the website, that gives you access to all of my previous yoga solutions that I've done. Okay, uh, as, as does all the other premium memberships. So that'll do from me. Um, yes, I hope that was useful. Much love to you all. I shall be here same time, same, same place next week if, if I uh, um, maybe answering another question if I get it on the group. Feel free to post any question you like on, on this group. I'll, I'll write an answer um, if, I, uh, if I see it. And um, I may even do a dedicated video to answer your question. Okay. Much love to you all. Bye now.